So in this short video, I'm going to take you through and show you how CSS scan can really speed up the process of finding out exactly what CSS is being used on any kind of design anywhere on the web. So if you see an effect that you think I'd love to recreate that, but you don't know how to start, then this little browser extension could be the answer to all of your problems. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you get more from WordPress. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so first of all, CSS scan. It's not something that's free. You do have to pay for this. And currently, there's a lifetime offer of $35, and that's it. You pay once. You have access to this as long as you want. There is a pro version, which I'm not going to touch upon because I think for most of us, the pay once model is going to be the best option for us. Now, first of all, I do have to say thank you very much to one of my Twitter subscribers or Twitter followers, and that's, excuse me for probably butchering your name, Anne Bovalette. She put this up in one of her posts and said about this, how she's loving it, piqued my interest, took a look at it, and going to be honest, I think it's one of those things that's definitely worth having in your toolbox. So let's take a look at what this does and how we can use it to really help us get more from our web design. So first thing you need to do is go and purchase this. And once you've done that, they'll send you through then a serial number. You can download this and depending upon what browser you use, you'll either have to download it or you can go to the Chrome extension store and you can just grab it from there just by doing a search for CSS scan. I've already gone ahead and done that. And as with most of these Chrome extensions, all it really does is put a little icon into your toolbar that you can enable either by clicking on that or by using a keyboard shortcut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to one of the sites that I created recently for one of the tutorials, which was the food blog. And let's just say I want to take a look at how I created any of these effects. So what I do is I come up, click to activate CSS scan. Once I've done that, I now get four options at the top of my screen. And when I mouse over anything on the screen, you can see I get this hover that shows me all of the relevant information for the CSS for that specific area. So if I go over the heading, you can see it gives us a highlight box in red to show us exactly what we're actually going through and selecting. And then it'll show us all the details under this. So things like the actual selector that's being used, We've then got the dimensions of that selector. We've got the font that's being used alongside things like the box sizing, the color, the font family, and so on. So all the useful information is in there. But what really is very, very useful about this is once I click, that copies that to my clipboard. So if I bring over just Notepad and I come into there and I simply come into Edit and we'll Paste, there's all the code pulled in for me. So I can easily go around a site that I've created or a site that I like the look of, and I can grab all that CSS code simply by clicking on it to copy it and then dropping it into a notepad or any other kind of text editor. We're not limited to doing just that. Let's just say I like the look of this and I want to kind of keep this on my screen. I can simply come over, hit the space bar. Once I do that, that will lock it in place. Now, once you lock this in place, one of the other things you can do, which is quite cool, is you can actually then go in and edit the CSS code. So you can take a look at what's going on, especially if it's your kind of website and you just want to play around tweaking a few things. Once you've locked that in place by pressing the space bar, you could pause the actual CSS scan so it gets rid of that on hover all the time. And then you can come in and start editing the CSS. So let's just say, for example, you wanted to change the border style to solid, for example, where we could do just that. We can test that out. So you can see now we have a solid border around our image. So it's very easy to come in, test things out, adjust them, play about with it to see exactly what's going to happen and make any changes you want. Whether, like I say, this is on your own website or you're testing this out on someone else's website to see if a color scheme would work in a way you expect it to before you bother trying to copy that and start editing and working on this. So there's a whole multitude of reasons why you may want to do this. Let's say hit the space bar, lock that in place. You can then pause CSS scan and start playing about the actual CSS code itself directly on screen in front of you inside CSS scan. So again, another really cool, very useful way of working with this particular tool. So that's very useful to start off with, but we can still do more. We can, if we want to, let's just come into the options section and you can see what we want to do. How do you want to configure this? So we see hover styles. Do we want to take note of that and copy that as part of the CSS definition? So if you've got something like a button, for example, that has an on hover effect, you can either choose to copy that and it'll copy it below and show you that information, or you can do things like copy it separately. 
copy it nested or merge it. So it's up to you how you want to do that. You've then got display. We've got grid and truncated selector. So what we can do is click on that and you see that will now put a red outline grid onto our screen and show us all the different CSS blocks. So this just visually makes it easier to find all the different elements on our screen hover over them and then we can see what we're talking about. So as you can see with this element, we've got the hover option listed at the bottom. So depending upon the hover styles option that I've chosen, whether to copy it, copy it separately and so on, that will take effect if there's a hover in place. So we've got options, like I say, for display in the grid, which will just show us all the different selectors inside our CSS page. Uh, truncated selectors, we can use that. We've then got miscellaneous options. So copy CSS selector. So you'll notice that by default, if I bring this back in, all this has done is is copied the CSS definition, not the selector that's being used. For example, you know, your H1, your H3, and so on and so forth. But if you want to, you can pull that data in with it. So let's just say, we'll say copy CSS selector. We come over, we click, we copy that the clipboard, and then we'll bring this in and we'll come underneath. And we'll just paste that in there. And you can see that now pulls in the selector as well. So we've got our entire CSS definition for that specific item on the screen. So all really depends on what you're trying to do. Again, you've then got things like convert font size measure units to pixels. So if they're using M's, REM's, percentages, and so on, if you want to work in pixel values exclusively, then what you can do is you can just use that option to convert it through to pixels. Ignore box sizing, as its name suggests, if box sizing is being used, you can ignore that. And the same things like ignore vendor prefixes. Then we've got the shortcuts that we can use for this particular plugin. So we've got Control, Shift and S to activate the extension. We've got Control, Shift and X to toggle grid. And we've got things like pause and continue. So you've got a nice range of shortcuts that just makes the whole process of working with this, enabling it, disabling it, whatever you want to do all very, very simple and straightforward. So if you work with CS and you're not CSS and you're not 100% comfortable with what you're doing there, or you just like to learn and dissect what other people do, this is a good tool that helps you go through and find something you like and simply just click the button and then copy and paste it or just mouse over so you can see exactly what that function is doing on screen and what definitions have been used to create that particular function. So that's it, that's what I wanted to show you, CSS scan. Definitely worth checking out, even once that offer, that lifetime offer of $35, which is 42% off, runs out. I think $60 for something like this, which if you are just getting started in web design or you just want to make working with CSS easy so you can see exactly what's going on, then this is worth checking out. Except no affiliates, no links, nothing at all whatsoever. This is just a tool that was recommended to me. I tried that myself, liked what it did, and bought it today. As always, I'd love to get your feedback on CSS Scan 2.0. Have you used this? Is this something you would consider using in any of your projects? Or have you found something that'll do the same thing or better for free or whatever the case may be when it comes to costs? Let me know in that comment section below because I'd love to share the tools that we use so we can all get better at web design and just make the whole process of working in this environment quicker and easier. As always, all applicable links are in the description below. My name's been Paul C and this has been WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.